What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go over the best T16 build again in Diablo 3 Season 27. And that is the DH, the Demon Hunter multi-shot strafe build. Now, I wanted to bring this. This is kind of an update video to the build because we have made a lot of changes to it, okay? So, again, we're going to go over this build and then I'm going to break everything down. We're just going to do a quick rift, as you guys know, as we do in our videos. Nothing really changes with that, but we're going to pop off and kind of just do this and showcase the build. So how this build works when you're playing guys is that you're going to activate multi-shot and then we're, all we're going to do is be strafing we're going to pop vengeance and keep that up as much as we can and then we have preparation for more discipline and then we're going to constantly just tag smoke screen and shadow power for, to just move across the map insanely fast okay so the trick is is that you want to be not necessarily constantly spamming your disc you know your uh shadow power and your uh smoke screen but you want to do it enough to where you keep your speed up okay you're already going to be getting a lot of speed from the uh all the gold that you're picking up because you're you're already invincible anyway Ooh, nice we got angelic crucible <clears throat> but you want to balance it enough so that way you're not necessarily dropping a whole lot of discipline okay we changed this build a lot since the previous video that we did but I, I definitely wanted to bring you guys an update because i have been farming non-stop with this build this whole season Ooh, good we got a really good map and it absolutely slaps as you guys can see you already you just destroy everything on the map like but you just destroy everything before you even see it i'm picking stuff up on the way guys i don't care you destroy everything it makes it so easy now, I will say that um, the only thing with this build when it comes to the Rift bosses and probably the, uh, you know, like if you're doing T16 bounties with this, is that, you know, it, it you don't necessarily one-shot your, uh, your bosses, but you are going to take them down within a few seconds. It's not, it's not a crazy amount of time, but you just won't be one-shotting like crazy unless you have just an insane amount of Paragon, but... Or, I guess, unless you have things augmented. We only have one thing augmented with the build, so... But you guys can see this build just slaps, man. It just slaps. And we you just annihilate everything. And it's super easy to build. You can throw on Netflix. You can, you know, throw on a show, throw up a build guide, anything like that. Ooh. Goblins. I hear the gobbles somewhere. Alright, here we go. We'll showcase what happens on the Rift Guardian. So see, you don't one-shot him, but you you absolutely delete him. You absolutely delete him. So we'll grab all this stuff, guys. We're going to go back to town, and we're going to break down everything inside the build. Let's just grab all this stuff, and I'm going to see you guys back in town. Let's pop off. Okay, so let's finish that. We got our XP for that, guys. Uh, now, let's go into the build and everything that you're going to need, okay? And then I'm going to break down the major differences and why I changed the build so much, okay? So you're going to need the... Uh, UE, the Unhallowed Essence set, you're going to need all six pieces, okay? We're not running the Ring of Royal Grandeur. I think before we were running Captain Crimson's, but we're not doing that anymore, okay? So we need the full six piece. Okay, we're going to pair that and have that roll with Gold Wrap. Gold Wrap with Boon of the Hoarder, along with your follower, Rockin' Avarice Band, you are going to be invincible, okay? You should just shouldn't die as long as you're picking up gold. Okay, we also pair that with... Uh, War Z and Chain Arm Guards for more speed. And then, of course, you have to have the Dead Man's Legacy and the Yang's Recurve with the Strafe Multi-Shot Power on there. Or, excuse me, the Strafe Power that's on there. And then, of course, Dead Man's Legacy for more Multi-Shot damage. Okay, now our Amulets and Rings. We're going with Squirts for more damage. We have Rachel's Ring of Larceny for more speed around the map. And then we have Stone of Jordan, which is a big change that we have for the build, okay? So those are our items and gear guys then we have zaya stone of vengeance for more damage Taguk for more damage plus a shield just to have a little bit more survivability but as you guys seen we absolutely slap everything and then of course boon of the hoarder all right guys the stat priorities that you're going to want for the build in your gear hasn't changed a whole lot from the last video but we're going to go over them one more time in the helmet you're going to want dex crit chance and then you want multi-shot damage we have vitality but you want multi-shot damage shoulders you want dex vit all resist cooldown for the gloves, you want dex, crit, crit, resource cost reduction. 
For the chest, you want dex, vitality, all resist, and then make sure you get 12 max discipline. For the squirts necklace, you're going to want dex, crit, crit, or if you want to swap out dex, try to get area damage. For the arm guards, you want fire skills, dex, vit, crit chance. For the ring, you want, well, both my rings suck on these guys, so don't don't hate me too much, but you're going to want crit, crit, area damage, I think is the best. Definitely crit, crit, area damage, but on Stone of Jordan, you're going to want fire skills instead of cold and then you're gonna want crit crit or um and then or just you could just do crit and then get the roll on elites if you get an ancient but that's what you're gonna want on the belt you're gonna want dex vitality all resist life on the pants you want dex vit all resist not armor guys i haven't got all resist on my pants yet and then on boots you're gonna want dex vit again you want all resist and then multi-shot damage on your quiver Okay, this is where things can change up a little bit. If you end up getting a really good Yang's recurve, then make that normal and then put your power here. But you want dex, attack speed, crit chance of multi-shot damage, cooldown instead of resource cost reduction, and then you want 12 maximum discipline. And then, of course, on the Yang's with the power, you're going to want fire damage, ideally damage percent, dexterity, uh, area damage, and then your cost reduction, and then you get 12% maximum discipline. Now, on the Yangs, if you don't want to do area damage, you could just do Vitality because, you know, Vitality, if you feel squishy, but you, you destroy everything, so make sure you have uh, area damage. But that is going to do it for the stat priorities on the build, guys. Now, in the cube, I have Dawn. I like Dawn to keep Vengeance up. If you don't care about having Vengeance up uh, almost all the time, we don't have exactly enough um, cooldown reduction. We're a little short to have 100% uptime, but... It's only like a couple more seconds and then we have it back up. So I would need a little bit more cooldown, about five more percent to have 100% uptime. You need 37% roughly uh, to have 100% uptime. And then we got Pride's Fall. So our resource costs are reduced by 30% after not taking damage. You should never take damage with this build ever. It just absolutely slaps. So this should always be on. And then I opted for Elusive Ring. You have a little flexibility here, guys, if you want to rock like obsidian ring of the zodiac to just have your stuff come off cooldowns that's fine i like elusive ring because we are going to be casting you know uh smoke screen and shadow power so we just have this up at all times it doesn't hurt to have it a little bit extra damage reduction okay especially for when we get down to like rift guardians and then bounty bosses our skills and abilities are passives so multi-shot arsenal for just a lot of damage multi-shot is the main thing here then we have strafe drifting shadow Okay, for more move speed. Smokescreen displacement for more move speed. If you want to change this and do the one that reduces the cost, absolutely feel free, guys. You can change this to displace or excuse me, special recipe, which is fine. If you want, I don't mind it. It uh, you know, I want the I want as much move speed as possible. I want to get around the map as fast as I can. Uh preparation, uh invigoration for instantly restores 30 discipline and permanently increases it by 20 more. This build is all about discipline, and we're going to go over that in just a sec. Next, we have Shadow Power Shadow Glide for just more move speed. And then, of course, Dark Heart Vengeance. Now, if you do feel like you're running a little low on hatred when you are playing this build, which you never should, you can change it to Seethe, but Dark Heart should, just be, should be just fine. Our passives are Tactical Advantage for more move speed, Blood Vengeance for hatred uh, increase, and then you gain hatred and discipline when you're healed ambush for more damage and then hot pursuit for more move speed okay so those are the passives now let's get into the changes and why we kind of mix this up and i'm bringing this build back to you guys this is the final version of the t16 ue strafe multi-shot build that i'm doing okay so the changes that we made was we swapped off crimsons and we swapped off our, our rings okay that those are the main changes we also swapped into arm guards instead of uh what is it instead of uh wraps of clarity so we swapped a bunch of items here okay and we changed our gems all of our gems into dexterity gems our emeralds and then we put in here uh a diamond for just cooldown reduction okay the reason we have emeralds in there is because we just want as much damage as absolutely possible okay so with the item changes the reason we did that is because this build is based everything on discipline okay although we're doing multi-shot and just strafing it all the six set piece bonus as you guys can see is you get 
350% increased damage for every point of discipline you have, okay? I have 95. When I pop Invigoration, I go to 100 or 110, or excuse me, 115, because I go up by 20. I go to 115 discipline. Now, the reason that we changed some of our items along with that is because you want maximum discipline in these weapons and gear, okay? You want max discipline in your Dead Man's Legacy, which is 12. You want max discipline in your Yang's Recurve, which is 12. You want max discipline in your armor, which is 12. Those are the three main pieces, okay? I used to run Focus and Restraint. You can still do that, and having these three with your max discipline does a crap ton of damage. I opted out because I wanted more speed because I'm already dealing enough damage, and I put in Stone of Jordan because Stone of Jordan is also another ring where you can get maximum discipline, okay? So we have, we're one point off max discipline on Stone of Jordan. So 12, 12, 12, and then nine out of 10 gives us 95 discipline. When we pop preparation, we go to 115 discipline times 350% per point. That is a lot of damage that we are just demolishing these rifts, these bounties, everything. So that is the main reason why we did these changes. The build is insanely fast, as you guys seen in that rift. Now I could have done a little bit faster if I wasn't picking up items. That's the only thing. You move so fast and destroy everything, you're just gonna have to backtrack and pick up items. So that's probably the only negative. If you're doing bounties, who cares? You're just going to be rocking through and just destroying things. Now, if you are doing bounties with a group, you can swap out Rachel's Ring of Larceny and put in your own Avarice Band. So that way you, you know, you're invincible here. That's what I would do. But otherwise, you have your follower with Avarice Band and you are all set to go. So that is the UE multi-shot strafe build for T16 and bounties, guys. This is the best one in the game right now for season 27 and i don't see that changing until the season's over i've been experimenting with a lot of builds we have some more t16 builds we're going to bring you but i still don't think they touch this one but that is going to do it for the video i wanted to update this build guide for you and just showcase how awesome it is but thank you guys so much for tuning in drop a like if you guys did enjoy the video and if you are new here be sure to subscribe all the support has been insane guys so again thank you so much and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace